Chapter 7, Section 4, Normalization and Relational Databases, by Matt Glover. Relational Databases. Relational databases split data into multiple tables, each containing records related to one type of item or entity, and then these tables are related to each other. They're a really great, great way to represent data, and I'll show an example on the next slide. The process of creating a relational database with no redundant data is known as normalization. Okay, so here's an example of a file database, the top one is, where it has all the information stored in one table, which goes against the principle that a table should represent a single type of item, because this, this information can be greatly condensed into a relational database, where there's the three items, the books, authors, and publishers, and their own separate tables, and then the fields that relate to them. And each of these tables will need to have a primary key to link um, each um, consequent table to each other. And so there would need to be a primary key. And by making a relational database with this data, it would be much easier um, to navigate, much, clear, much clearer to read. As you can see, this top database is very, um, has like a lot of information, while the other ones are much smaller, and it's easier to find things in the relational database. And one, one common mistake that people make um, that I wanted to point out was that if you need to put somebody's age, it's better to put their birth date rather than their age because their age will change every year. And you don't know, and if you just put their age, you don't know when it's going to change. And you'll also have to go back through the database to change that every time their birthday change. So it's better to just put the date rather than their actual age. Relationships. So in a relational database, the data needs to be normalized into separate tables and then linked or related to other tables. This is essential for a relational database to work because obviously by the name, um, it's completely based on relationships between different tables. If, if it didn't use relationships, it would just be flat file uh, databases where the, the databases contain all the data and you just search through it and it's just there's no relationships to any other tables. It's just one single table. And um, the picture below represents, it shows um, two different tables, city and individual, and it shows a relationship between um, the city and the city table and the individual table. And the individuals in the individual table live in cities that are defined in the city table. So therefore, we can look at um, each individual record with a city record. And that way, we can access the data that way with the relationships that we were created. Parts of a relationship. So one of the first parts of, of a relational database is the primary key. The primary key uniquely identifies each record in the table. It can either be a normal attribute that's guaranteed to be unique, or it can be generated by the DBMS. An example of this would be a global unique identifier, or GUID, in the Microsoft SQL server. And an example of one that would be guaranteed to be unique would be something like a social security number in a table with no more than one record per person. But the problem with this would be that if the relational database was hacked and the information was compromised, then if it, I mean, if because it, it's a relational database, it contains information regarding that social security number. So somebody that hacked it could gain access and um, and steal somebody's identity. So this wouldn't be a good idea to use a social security number. I think the best thing to do would be to create a unique identifier for the database that has no meaning outside of the database. Because this way, if this way you have a unique identifier that works for the database. And that way, if, if, that, if the information gets hacked or somebody finds the primary key, then you won't have any issues because it doesn't mean anything. Um, and one tip is to not use names in a database because if two employees have the same name, that becomes an issue. Like if, if two employees are named John Smith, then then the relational database won't work correctly because uh, um, they, the name isn't unique. So they'll have, different, they'll have different tables, but they have the same name, so it won't work correctly. So you need a unique ID or unique. So another part of a relationship is the foreign key. The foreign key is a field in a relational table that matches the primary key column of another table. It's used to cross-reference tables. So let's say we have a table called employees that contains personnel information for every employee in the firm. And then let's imagine that we want to add a table containing departmental information to the database. This new table, we might call it departments, and then it contain a large amount of information about the department as a whole. And we'd also want to include information about the employees in the department, but it'd be redundant to have the same information in the employees and departments tables. So instead, we could create 
a relationship between the two tables. So let's assume that the department's table uses the department name column as the primary key. To create a relationship between the two tables, we add a new column to the employee's table called department. We then fill in the name of the department to which each employee belongs. We also inform the database management system that the department column in the employee's table is a foreign key that references the department's table. The database will then enforce re referential integrity, which is a database concept that ensures that relationships between tables remain consistent. One-to-many relationships. So one thing between authors and books in this case is the one-to-many relationship. Since one author could have many books, but one book only has one author. So to fix this, an author ID field needs to be added to the books table so that the field can be related to the author ID field in the authors table. And by doing this, the redundant problem is solved. Since in order to find out the author of a specific a specific book, we, we look at the book record, find the author ID field, then look up the corresponding author ID in the author's table. And the good thing about creating this author ID table is that if, if you make a change to an author's information, the changes are reflected um, since only one copy of the author's info is there rather than if you have the author's, um, if you have the author's info repeated over and over, you'll have to change in each, in each field if you do it that way. So by doing this, you save a lot of work you save yourself a lot of um, extra work to do if you have to change something. So to complete the normalization process, a second relationship needs to exist between the publisher table and the books table. Because again, the relationship is one too many, since one book has exactly one publisher, but one publisher has many books potentially. So a foreign key, in this case publisher, needs to be added to the books table. As you can see below, the normalization process is complete as the foreign key is added to the books table and all of the tables are related together. And here are the sources and credits. Creator of introduction and closing videos and PowerPoint presentation is me and Matt Glover. And then under that are the uh, links that I use for the information presented in this PowerPoint.